All right, so this is the intake manifold. It's a uh, Holly Stealth Ram base. It's really hard to see because it's black. Um, it's basically like a dual tunnel ram. Yeah, it's pretty much hidden. <laughs> so anyways, this is our custom carbon fiber upper intake plenum. Um, like we said, 10 years ago, 11 years ago, we designed this thing. Uh, tough part is trying to fit it under stock flat hood. And uh, the base has been milled down and uh, actual height of the plenum is, is, this, is the same as stock. So anyways, this is what it looks like on the car. Um, it's been on here for 10 years and it's worked out really well. Really a cool piece. Got the air intake tube, we custom fabricated that as, as well. It's carbon fiber, it's a pretty stout piece. So that's what it looks like on the car. Hey, this is Keith at Custom Works and we're here today. We're gonna discuss uh, kind of a cool project that we did and it was kind of a, it's something like, well, it'd be really cool if I if I made this part for my car and it'd be kind of a one-off kind of whatever. And it was back in a time in my life when I didn't have any kids and really didn't have a lot of family obligations and had a lot more free time than I do now. And uh, I was in the process of building a new motor and decided that I wanted really to have something really cool on it. And I uh, had been previously running a Holley Stealth Ram, which it looks like a, a tunnel ram. I'll post up some pictures of, of what they look like from the factory. Um, it's got, you know, uh, uh, two stacks, you know, basically with a plenum box, which just looks like a big square box on the top. And it really wasn't anything impressive looking. And, uh, Well, you know, I could probably make my own. I thought, well, maybe I'll fabricate one out of aluminum or whatever. But uh, for a lot of you that, that don't know, but custom work started off, and <laughs> we actually started off with one of the first things we ever did was a bunch of carbon fiber parts. So I decided that, that let's make a carbon fiber intake manifold. So what we did was took the basic dimensions and uh, just kind of altered them and, and, and whatnot. And we came out with this crazy thing. And what this is, is what we'd call as a plug. Um, basically, it's a mock-up of what you want. And uh, we fitted this on the intake manifold. There's holes on the front where the throttle body went. One of the things that we realized was that we had to put an indention here because the throttle body actually has a screw to open and close the blades to adjust them for idle. And uh, that was something if I hadn't mocked it up completely, I never would have known that I was going to run into that problem. So this thing was you know, basically mocked up on the manifold. We knew it would fit under the hood and uh, everything was good. So at that point, once we, you have that part, you go, well, what do we do? We need to make a... Uh, mold for it and so with keeping that in mind I had what as I was this was how I was going to make this was going to be a two-piece mold and I couldn't tell you the last time I took this thing apart so anyway so when I when I made this thing which is actually just made out of MDF wood um, you can see that it's hollow inside um, and the reason why it looks like this is is I actually primered it and then um, painted it with a black lacquer, uh, but I also wet sanded it to make it nice and smooth. Uh, so, you know, basically the smoother you get, the better the smoother your, your mold's going to be. And because of its shape, we had to kind of make it in two pieces, kind of like this. And originally, the top of it had these ribs milled in it, and really was to kind of help give it some rigidity. And I found that these ribs were really too narrow, um, had problems with them laying up in the mold. And uh, it's unfortunate, I don't know, maybe it would look good, maybe it wouldn't. Here, here is actually one of the layups that we did with it. And it just came out with some air voids here where the, the, the fabric, the fabric doesn't stretch, the carbon fiber will not stretch. 
So if you, if you don't get it all in all the recesses and everything perfectly, you'll have air bubbles in there. And that's one of the biggest common defects with carbon fiber parts is that. So after doing the first layup, I said, well, this sucks. This isn't going to work out so great. So we actually changed and made, here's the mold, the original mold for the top. Mold came out great. It's a nice piece. Uh, but it didn't work out so well. So we made a new top. Basically made this top without all the ribs in it. And um, so the way we made a mold for this was we actually mounted it onto a piece of this melamine board, which is nice because nothing sticks to it. Got this all nice and smooth. It's just basically got a clear lacquer on it. And then we made a mold, which is basically the same shape. It's got a nice flange around it. Um, we made the flange so we could vacuum bag these things. We ended up not actually vacuum bagging these things. Um, really didn't need to. Um, I'll get more into the layup of this in just a minute, how the, the complexity of it and, and what was involved in making this thing. But anyways, this was lid number two on it. Here's the mold. Um, it came out nice. So... We've got the base, and here's the mold for the base. So, you know, basically, this was inside here, pulled it out, this is the mold. And it was a, a relatively okay piece to lay up. It had some sharp areas that were kind of hard to make sure that you get the fabric all perfect in it. But we made a couple of these, and so this is, this is the piece, and it's, it's amazing. Um, but yeah, this, this basically came out of the mold. It's probably moved and distorted. It's a pretty tight fit. Um, but really, to make this thing out of carbon fiber and make it two pieces, one of the difficult problems that we had with it was how do we attach the lid to the part? And originally, when I made this thing, um, the one piece that's missing here is here here's a template and this is this is kind of getting a little off track but I'll, I'll show you what I mean but this is a template that is the top of the two stacks and so we made this template that went on here um, and this was so I could actually use like a, a router and we'd cut these cut the shape out where these would mount to the to the intake base um, so we did that and then basically took some two-part epoxy epoxy the lid to the top and then went inside actually with these, these openings that were cut in the bottom and actually laid some more fabric up, up around the seam and, and, and epoxied it all together. And we ran out like that for a while and then we had a problem with the crank sensor and, and the thing had a couple of intake uh, backfires and it actually split, split the manifold on the seam. And, and so um, what we ended up doing is going back and actually so to, to, to sort of get to one of the challenges was attaching the top to this manifold, we actually had to make it so there was enough area for this thing to go together. And if you look, this thing is at least, it's a quarter inch thick, this of, of fiberglass and carbon fiber. I think there's probably four layers of, of six ounce two by two twill uh, carbon fiber and then there's probably another six layers of, of, of fiberglass on here um, to build up the thickness. I mean this thing is, is this thing's indestructible. I mean this thing is you know built like a Formula One car chassis. And so so that gave us enough surface area that we could epoxy this thing. So the next so once it cracked um, or it didn't crack it, it the seam split we actually went back and actually <laughs> We used the right stuff on it, and and the cool part was that gave it a little bit of flexibility, and it's also a good adhesive, and it's also high temperature and, and whatnot, and so so it, it's been like that for about eight years, and we haven't any, had any, any problems. And so one of the things that we also needed to do was the the way it bolts to the to the manifold. You can see on here there's two holes and two holes, and through the, the lid there's you know, a set of two, two holes here and two holes here. 
with four bolts bolting this thing down. And so we really couldn't just bolt it down. So what we had to do was cut these spacers here and we actually put spacers inside um, and epoxy those in place. So when this thing was, was tight, it, it actually sandwiched everything together. And um, we actually thought that would be great and that would, that would be strong enough. And it really was, it really was fine. Um, but when we initially started the engine up, this, this blew my mind. I mean, this lid, this thing is, is so stout and so thick. And so on the first fire up of the engine, um, actually in the car, um, so we got the engine running with a whole new Holley EFI system and it was really complicated. I don't know, you'd see another video that, you know, we've got a coil on plug on a small block Chevy. Um, at 10 years ago, this was not really all that heard of, and so it was it was kind of kind of crazy. And all the things that we thought could go wrong or would be a problem starting this thing up, we never thought this would be would be one of them. So we get this thing up, we fire it up, and boom, it fires right off, and it's idling and it's running, and everything's great, and it's happy days, no fuel leaks, no smoking, no issues, no whatever. So we're sitting on there and, and crack the throttle open, and as this thing got up to temperature. Um, and we cracked the throttle open, it actually, because of the vacuum of the engine, actually you can see this thing suck down and, and, and come back up as I, as, I, as I worked the throttle on it. And that became a, uh-oh, how, how do we fix that? Because if that thing's going to continue to, the lid's going to continue to do this, at some point, you know, the seam's going to fail or, or, or the, the part itself is going to fail. And so what I ended up doing was actually with and this is all done through the holes that we cut in the bottom where it actually goes into the intake manifold is i actually made an airfoil that basically went inside the manifold kind of like this um in between the two center stacks that was probably only about yay long well it could be you know about yay long here in between the two stacks and I shaped it like an airfoil, and so it was really it was really thin, so air could flow through the throttle body into into the back stack, no problem with any obstruction. And uh, I actually made it out of wood, so I mean there's no real problems. It's not going to catch on fire. It's not going to get too hot. I mean wood combusts at like you know 800 degrees, or I believe. Anyways, so we put this airfoil in there, and and it supported the center part of the lid. And again, you know, 10 years down the road, we haven't had any problems with it. And uh, it's been a really cool piece, and it was really a fun project. And uh, this was something that we, we thought, well, well, you know, maybe we can make this as a, 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 as a production piece. And, and we ended up making uh, another one for a customer, and it's, it's been gone for years, and I haven't heard anything back or any problems or any issues. But it's one of those things that, you know, really the small block Chevy and fuel injection <laughs> manifolds really wasn't really, isn't really the hotbed now. And uh, it, it's, I was always kind of waiting to figure out to, how long and how well it worked out on my car. And like I said, 10 years and it's been a great manifold. Um, power wise, because of the extra volume in the plenum, it's probably a little bit better than what the, the original Holly Stealth Ram came with. And again, I'll, I'll, I'll post some pictures of that. And uh, I'll, I'm gonna try to dig up some pictures of, of some of this stuff as I was making it. I remember taking some pictures and I have those around. But uh, anyways, I mean, this is all stuff that you guys can do. One of these days we're gonna make a book uh, on how to do, you know, composite layups and, and, and stuff. And, you know, we do lots of different parts and, you know, we have our rally sport nose, we've got our dash panels that we make. Uh, we used to make a lot of the carbon fiber bumpers for the 70 to 73 Camaros. We don't really make those too often anymore just because we don't have the time to do it. Um, but anyways, I hope that was interesting and, uh, it's really a cool part, you know, it's one of those things that, you know, people don't really notice under the hood at first that it's carbon fiber, uh, but it is, and, and it was a lot of fun to make and, and, it, and it was kind of a challenging part in, in a lot of ways, but, uh, anyways, we wanted to just kind of, we didn't really have any updates on, on our 71 Camaro progress or anything new necessarily going on in the shop and, you know, it's the end of 2020 and let's just hope that 2021 is a better year. And uh, we thought we'd just share this with you guys uh, for the heck of it, see if you guys are interested in something cool to look at. So anyways, appreciate it. Have a great year.